When the uniform came off, Ted Senor's war went on. I remember being a little girl, he would wake up with night terrors. I would hear him scream, he'd wake up in the middle of the night just soaking sweat. Ted Senor. That's me right there. Sent to Vietnam at 19. Dear kid. I know. I, I, look at me. The wide-eyed Sheldon, Wisconsin farm kid. Right here. In over his head. And soon under the watchful eye of a mentor. Yeah, him and I. And friend. Fort Riley, Kansas. That's Vern and that's I. Vern Enert was five years older than Ted. Vern and I were goofing around one day in the barracks, and I flipped him right over. Still, they became. We were riding home. Fast. Friends. This is Vern up here. This is me here. <laughs> I was sleeping one night and he came back from having a few drinks. Together, they shipped out. The USS Gordon. 1965. They said, your destination is Southeast Asia. We didn't know anything about Vietnam. Vietnam. I said, what? Nobody in our, in our platoon said, what the hell? Where's Vietnam? Questions with answers that would shape the rest of their lives. I don't know how they, they really made it through when you look at about 60,000 people that never made it back. That first night was all hell. Everybody was shooting at everything. Ted survived. That night and a year's worth of days to come. That uh, bunker. With Vern. That's me. By his side. Vern laying over here, taking a nap. We used to dig holes and foxhole at night and sit with our back to one another. Vern and I, we were, we were just like that all the way through. And then, having served their time and country, Vern and Ted took off their uniforms and went home. Did you ever try to find Vern after you got back? No, never tried. When they came back, I think, I think they just wanted to forget what actually happened. Just the horror of it. My father never spoke about anybody. But then Ted's daughter, Cindy, yeah. grew up to be a middle school teacher, taking classes to Washington, D.C. and the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. He asked me to look up a few names for him that were on the wall. As she rubbed those names in pencil on paper, Cindy knew instinctively a page had turned. I knew that um, when he asked me to bring those, um, those names home, I knew it was time to start reaching out to find his buddies that were still alive. Cindy also soon knew the first call she would make. Howdy. Laverne. Hi there, Ted. You How old are you? dog ain't seen you for Hi. so long. How you doing? Good, young man. <laughs> Vern. Yeah. Found by Cindy in Frazee, Minnesota. I got a beer. You want a beer? I could probably stand one. Two bodies sharing a beer. Yeah, I always looked up to you, Vern. And memories. There's nice our picture. tent. This is this was where we lived in and in uh, Benoit. Yeah. I think what they went through. I had the bottom bunk, you had right. the top bunk. The stories they told one another. Yeah. <laughs> that was their family. <laughs> yeah. And so reuniting them, I think, is just, it brings that family back together. Over time, Ted's uniform has faded and frayed. Call it a daughter's intuition. <laughs> that old soldiers can be mended. Too. I'm sure glad to see yeah. you again, young man. <laughs> Boyd Hooper, Carol Evan News, Frazee, Minnesota. <laughs>